Hello and welcome. You're tuned to the Leg Up, your weekly thoroughbred preview podcast. And I guess it's 2000 Guineas week, Stephen Hunt, but I guess it's also Melbourne Cup week as well. And what a performance uh, from very elegant James McDonald, Chris Waller, all involved. Uh, and Kiwi customers too, who didn't forget to back it. Good oh, afternoon absolutely. to you. Yeah, afternoon, that is. Yeah, what a performance. Uh, a real Kiwi influence when it came to the Melbourne Cup. And just being a busy last seven days, it's just flowing by. But going back to the Melbourne Cup, very elegant. She just really excels once she gets over that 2,400 metres. She's a genuine stay. Look, she's a fantastic horse over a shorter trip as well. Don't don't want to knock her there, but um, she really does peak when she gets to 2,400 metres. She's had six starts over those staying trips when she gets to 2,400. Um, she's taken out a Melbourne Cup, a Caulfield Cup, mm. a Tancred, and an AJC Oaks as a three-year-old filly. So, um, yeah, she's... Uh, she, look, going on all the astute judges mm. who have rated the Melbourne Cup in the last 48 hours. Yeah. Uh, they've run time. Rated right. To, uh, time yeah. form and ratings have, have got her going through the roof as a PB in the Melbourne Cup. And on the eye, that, that, that backs it up, doesn't it? Because she was very special on the eye. And as you mentioned, it just seems to be a really good vibe locally here. Uh, that, that Kiwi influence around James McDonald, Chris Waller, mm. uh, the breeding side of it being by Z and, and, and the breeders back here in NZ. Yeah. Um, yeah, just that real genuine Kiwi influence. And yeah, there's just been a nice vibe in the last two to three days on the back of that win because so many people we know New Zealand's a small place have a mm. connection in some way yeah. or another. But um, yeah, can't knock a very elegant. Mm. She she is a genuine champion. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a man that had a financial connection. Good afternoon, Brendan Popperwell. I think you had her on top. She stretched him out at the end there, didn't she? Very elegant. She did, yeah. Uh, what a ride. I mean, to be honest with you, you won't you won't find a better ride in the Melbourne Cup or any feature race, will you, from James McDonald from Barrier 18 to be able to find the position that he did following the right horse. And it just meant he could present when he was ready to go uh, and uh, was, was watching the race uh, with George Simon and our crew. Uh, and, yeah, we were all saying and yelling, discount James at the 600 count because he's got handfuls and... Boy, didn't she release! It was, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was great. It was great viewing, and yeah, it was, it was even better for those if you had a, a dollar or two on here as well. So, um, I just feel as though that there's so many different sides to this Melbourne Cup, isn't there? The, the argument of the internationals are missing, and yes, we missed that flavour, but we still had it, and it was almost like it was back to the old Melbourne Cup, wasn't it? The People's Cup, the the cup where everybody could relate to the runners that were in the Melbourne Cup because. It wasn't full of 15 horses we had never heard of beforehand. Uh, I, there was just something about it. And I know there's more. There's something more special to it because of the New Zealand connection and going right from being a New Zealand breed to a trainer and, and jockey and everything else about very elegant winning. But there was just that little bit different about the Melbourne Cup this time round, And I quite liked it. I do like the internationals, and I'm not saying we don't need them. Of course we do. I just felt as though this Melbourne Cup, there was just uh, a little bit more fairy tale possibility that the ocean billies being in the race and those type of horses that really do get stories out of a melbourne cup that we've all grown up with uh you know over the last sort of 30 or 40 years and and and, and further than that than that as well so I, I enjoyed melbourne cup there on tuesday i really did yeah i know what you're saying bp it was a breath of fresh air and a lot of respects to have a bit of a throwback melbourne cup um and see a good new zealand bred horse win it i was good let's say hello to uh network television star Paul Moani, TV1 on Melbourne Cup Day. Good afternoon, Paul. Thanks for making time for us. G'day, Thad. Yeah, uh, look, I, I totally agree with uh, Stephen and BP there. Uh, it's a fantastic Kiwi story, first of all, with just Kiwi connections all around the place. Kiwi owners, Kiwi bred, Kiwi trainer, Kiwi jockey. Um, look, she she ran a really good race last year, really, didn't she? From a wide draw again, but uh, just didn't get the same sort of ride last year. She was drawn wide again. Any wider, she would have been starting in the middle of St Kilda Beach. Um, but as BP said, yeah. James McDonald got her across from that wide draw before they had run a furlong. It, yeah. it was across and just outside, just probably just in front of midfield. And as BP said, in behind, the one you wanted to be in behind. And um, yeah, I... <laughs> As they came around the turn, I thought, oh, crikey. I wonder how much we're in the red for this one. Now. Yeah. <laughs> because it was enough. It was there enough. wasn't going to be anyone else winning. She she was supreme. It was, yeah, yes. a, yes. a fantastic Lucky story. It was a, 
a couple of Kiwis in the race as well, just to balance the box, the likes of Ocean <laughs> Billy. Yeah, we had a few, didn't we? But this ride surprised me, Steve, in a way. It caught me off guard, I guess. I'm from 19, and I guess should I should know better James McDonald. You know, he's going to be top jockeys do have a bit of positivity about him, generally speaking. I thought he might have been more neutral and tried to track into the race, but I, I think it was almost the winning of the race when he got, got her into the spot he did. Uh, I'd say plan A was to be neutral, but yeah. that's the key about James. He he can change plans in the matter of one or two furlongs mm. uh, when the gates open, and he would have seen that pressure from four or five. I think there was at least four or five outside him that were looking to push forward. Yeah. I think going past the winning post for the very first time, um, Per Sam was the obvious leader, but just prior to that, there was five or six looking for that top two or three position. So, um, yeah, look, sometimes, James, he, he might go with a plan A, but he'll just see what unfolds in front of him. And I think that's what's happened. He's seen a lot of horses go across him from wider gates, and uh, he's managed to slide in just worse than, well, I think it was around about midfield, mm. maybe maybe a fraction forward to midfield. But yeah. uh, And he found that three-wide train, which you're going to get in the Melbourne Cup with a big, uh, big size field and a big roomy track. And, uh, yeah, it was a fantastic ride, and you didn't want to be on any other horse no. going 600. No, you did but we saw him do it many, many times from Trentham to Tarapa over here, where he'd be drawn wide and just get across without spending a penny. And now mm. he was up against a different class of jockey this time, um, but he just, he did the same thing. He just absolutely just glided in from out wide, slotted in, put it asleep. I know it's easy looking back now, but crikey, that was a great ride. Yeah, maybe we don't, BP, maybe we don't give, like James, oh, we're obviously he's getting a lot of accolades, James McDonald, but the homework, the behind the scenes stuff that we maybe don't see, the form, they're doing the speed maps, there's all that that goes into it now in a modern mm. top jockey, isn't there? Oh, yeah, form and just, you know, fitness, gym. You know, like these guys, are, they, they really do nail down their profession now, don't they? And and they're athletes, and that's pure, pure and simple. And he is right at the top echelon uh, of his sport, uh, is James McDonald. And I think in this country, unfortunately, it's very hard that he doesn't get recognised as being one of our leading sportsmen. He should. He should be because he is. He's at the top of his game, you know. And you know, he's the old argument keeps coming up that he should be, he should be a bloke that should be nominated for a Helberg and those sorts of things. Um, but horse racing as a sport in this country isn't really looked upon like that as it is in Australia. And uh, it, it's it, we're right in the thick of it. We're in the game. We we, we you know we that, that's where we're coming from. Those on the outer. Would watch the Melbourne Cup and go, oh, James McDonald. Yeah, yeah, I think I've heard from. Is he an Aussie or a Kiwi? Um, yeah, I think he's a Kiwi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like it's just, um, yeah. It, it's that, that's the one thing that always bugs me, isn't it? But he is a supreme athlete, and he got a bang on in the Melbourne Cup. Pops was has Mark got the first, ever uh, Sorry, sorry, Paul, you go. He, yeah, he was on that. She was on that long list, wasn't he? Like they did, mm. I think he made the finalist, but they sort of acknowledged him backdoor, acknowledged him by putting him on a long list. I think Pops has got the. Uh, First Halberg Brick Batson for the uh, for the year, so that was that was pretty, <laughs> like we could have a whole show on that pops. Hal, Halberg. He's yet to peak, yeah. right, James McDonald? He's twenty nine years old. I think yeah. he's got fifty seven Group One wins to his name. I mean, jockeys, you'd say maybe they don't peak to their mid thirties, maybe late thirties. Mm. So he's still got a decade or so where he could uh, he could find his best form. Yeah, 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 absolutely. He's he quite frightening, really. That Australian scene yeah. for another ten years, couldn't he, if he wants it? Okay, guys, we better push on. Um, we've got a great weekend's racing here in New Zealand and obviously highlighted by Starter Cup Week, Steve, down in uh, down at Rickerton and Addington. Um, and we start with the 2,000 guineas. And that's the first race we're going to have a look at. Race number eight on the card. Uh, who's our favourite here in the 2,000 guineas? Yeah, Navier on a very impressive uh, last start winner at Rickerton over 1,600. Went up $2.90. third. has been backed into 250. Probably yeah. one of the better back runners on both cards thus far, no veer. And that was including a $6,000 bet at 2.9. So it's driven its price into $2.50 and accounts for roughly 85% of the hold. A Wakari, $5, second elect. Field of Gold, 480 out to six. A Dark Destroyer, $8. Now, double figures around I Wish I Win. Second best bat runner has been backed in that middle market. Open 11, got as high as 12. A uh, firm back into mm. 10. Uh, Mana Nui, 9 out to 11. She has the same price as Meritable. Uh, Mackenzie Ladd, uh, $21. Cesar, Moroni Gerard Stable, 18 out to 26. And the Ranky is Fire Glow, 
41 out to 61. So two talking points. Mm. Both uh, come out of the Jamie Richards stable. Navia firmer, 290 into 250. And I wish I win 11 into 10. He managed to turn the tables, BP Navia, last time over field uh, of gold and did it very impressively. The water cree form holding up here over the Sartan form. That might be a little bit unusual in itself. Yeah, it could be. And mm. you know what else I like about the water creek? It's 1,600 metres. Uh, and these horses have run the 1,600 metre trip where there is, you know, certainly there's that question mark around a couple of key runners in this race about getting to uh, that distance of the mile uh, where Navia, I thought Field of Gold, still ran well. He was a horse who was who was really pushed forward and running from his low draw off the back of how we beat Navia last time. Uh, two starts to go to the races. Uh, and Mackenzie Ladd was it was an honest run also to finish uh, into third position. But everything that he did in that race, Navia, just went, you were really just gravitating towards him in the 2000 guineas. I love how he attacked the line two starts ago. He brought it all together, 1,600 metres. And then he put a little extra Opie Bossin magic towards this as well. And it just feels like it's set up nicely for him to get it done. I do believe this is a strong field, though. I think there is a number of other chances around him. I don't think you want to be riding off Wakari. I wish I win with a good draw. Dark Destroyer. Though Meritable also coming through that Hawks Bay Guineas Sartan form line. So, yes, he's the one to beat, but he still has to beat a, a, a good field here on Saturday. Yeah, well, what about I wish I won BP? Let's just touch on him just quickly because I think he's probably 2,000 Guineas favourite for a fair old chunk of time. What, what do you, Where do you have him in the preparation? Because just on the eye, well, he's obviously out to about fourth or fifth favourite now. Uh, I guess with how he was, um, a couple of things are looking at him, was was he really willing to put them away and put the field away and put a race away uh, a couple of times? So hence why they went with uh, putting some blinkers on him uh, leading into that race at Ashburton. Now, I, I, I'm prepared to forgive him in that race too because he did draw barrier number 10 uh, in that race and he still ran a good race in behind the leading filly uh, and there you go when beaten the two lengths. What he will have in his favour on the weekend is he's got the chance of having a softer run in transit as opposed to, you know, what he's had in his three starts back at least anyway, but just where he might be able to take a spot uh, and... Every time we've spoken to Jamie Richards, he's been still positive about him and he still has a firm belief of where he's heading and it's all heading in the right direction. So he could be that knockout hope and I'm interested to hear that there is some of that money floating around for him. Yeah, they're exactly right. It, it is 12 into 10 just this afternoon. Paul, initial thoughts around the 2,000 guineas, Navia 250? Yeah, very hard to look past uh, Navia. As BP said, Opie Bossen uh, just puts another little tick in the box there. Uh, for the Jamie Richards runner uh, and the money that's come as well, 290 into 250. I do like the look of the CD Raider, uh, Wakari with uh, Daniel Johnson aboard. I thought the run last time was very, very good. Uh, I, I can't go past Dark Destroyer. Uh, I just, yeah, I just keep looking towards number five, Novia, and it's very, very hard to look past them. Yeah, look, he put Field of Gold away pretty easily, Paul, last time, didn't he? I, I mean, we haven't seen any money for Field of Gold. I guess they're thinking uh, he might not be able to turn the tables, Field of Gold, on Navia. That, that That's what you think? And and usually we see a bit of money from that stable, don't we, when, when, when they're very, very confident. And, and the lack of support so far um, and, and the drift that we've seen, uh, what are we now, $6, 480 mm -hmm. out to $6, would suggest that maybe there's just not that confidence there at the moment. Or well, maybe they're just waiting for the right price and they'll jump on said day. <laughs> what, what, I will say about field, what, I, what I will say about Field of God is do, I will believe he's going to be ridden a lot differently uh, on, on Saturday. He won't be uh, as far forward. They will give him time to be able to uh, sort of work into the race and he'd be more a pair or two back trying to find that midfield position and not hustling uh, like he has and like we've seen from him in his first couple of starts pre this preparation so he can get out a strong 1600 meters so uh, that would be one thing i'd be taking notes on around field of gold for this race okay that is interesting news i mean how steve how did you line this market up with a sartan and a water cree because there look some progressive types coming through that sartan and also wakari as well has been starting at some pretty short price quotes yeah i had the sartan one length below par which is pretty good in terms of three old black print this season uh, Water Cree, a fraction below that, was around about 1.7 lengths below par. But 
superior when it came to the Hawks Bay Guineas, who rated very low. Uh, Mandanui winning that okay. race, obviously beating Wakari, that rated four lengths below par in terms of black type print for a three-year-old stakes race. So um, probably leaning towards uh, the Padanui Bay form uh, in terms of the Sartan and also the Water Creek stakes. Mm. But um, yeah, I'm not sure about Field of Gold. It's interesting thoughts that BP says it's going to be ridden in a neutral position, uh, maybe just forward to midfield. That probably gives the obvious lead to uh, Meritable. And being by Snitzel, wouldn't want to go too hard early doors. Mm. There's a question mark around 1,600 metres. straight there, Rickard, Again, it? comes out of the same race. Uh, it comes out of the right race, the Sartan. And yep. a second to Paranui Bay. That's probably a good enough reference to suggest it's a winning chance in an open race if you want to go outside and veer as Paranui Bay probably would have been in the top two in the market. Yep. Um, but field of gold, uh, yeah, blinkers on. But last 600 was seven lengths, seven lengths inferior to Navia. So that's 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 something to oppose. Mm. Um, but again, the, the betting has marked this horse as a very good individual. You look at its last three SPs, $1.32, $16.80 around field of gold. So naturally, it's going to bring back the price. Uh, I know it's a drifter. It's gone 480 up to six, but... That's that's very short SPs this yeah. last three runs. So the betting or identifying this runner is well above average. Um, and if Nevea's the horse to beat, look, it did run second. It did do things wrong over racing on speed where a couple of horses came outside it and in front of it mid-race. So um, at some stage, I just reckon that price might drive back in just on its SPs throughout this light career. Mm. Uh, BP, Dark Destroyer, I know you're pretty close to the stable. Um, I'm thinking the positives. Look, the maiden win rated highly. Uh, nice. It did run home the fastest 8, 6, 400 splits in the Sartan. The negatives, the most inexperienced galloper in this field, only having three starts equal was Caesar. And also the possibility of a firmish track. I know it's a dead mm. five at the moment. I think if it was run right now, they'd be happy with a dead five. But mm. if it gets into that good range, Dark Destroyer, where, where do you sit about this horse? Because I've got no doubt it's got of ability, but is this race yeah. just come up a fraction too soon? Yeah, maybe. And I, I sort of see him as that, you know, that early derby selection, doesn't he? I mean, he's you you, you watch the way that he ran the Sartan and you just think, boy, can't wait till we get to the summertime uh, and we get through that Auckland Carnival and, and start preparing for a horse towards a derby because uh, he just screams it, doesn't he? I, I, I believe uh, is. Uh, a, a son of price here going further than 1600 meters what 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 are his positives i think he's he's also got a low draw it means he can get uh he can get tucked away uh and he can try and work home at his best yet rock hard track or a firm track at least anyway uh if it continues to dry out that that is a, a an unsure and I've, at times i've spoken about andrew you know that he he does believe that he just he just love to get his toe under the ground but hey look they can get away with it for the very first time, uh, and uh, that'll be the case for him on the weekend. So I think he's still a great chance of running him four with just how he ran in the start and, and, and how he can work home. And he just looks like he's going to be one of the closers late that you need to be wary of uh, in the last two or 300 metres if he does get that nice suck trip in the race. So uh, I, I like the horse and I like him going forward, and he's, he's one that I want to keep following out of this race. What about Mana Nui? Yeah, Steve, quickly, because... It, do we forgive him last start, or was that sort of run to expectation off the back of a slightly disappointing Hawks Bay Guineas on paper, not a disappointing win? But he was right there in calculation in a starting, and he finished sixth and behind Meritable, Dark Destroyer, uh, and the like. Um, yeah, closed at 270 in the starting. Yeah, well, that's, back, that's right. Yeah. Um, again, I'll go back to the Hawks Bay Guineas win, just rated well below for my liking. I'm, I'm keen to to go towards the Sartan, the top two or three in that race, which didn't feature in Mata Nui. And also uh, the lead up, um, the Watercrease Stakes at Rickerton is two key okay. to lead up. So I want to take a set against him. Look, he did things wrong, but tardy in the Sartan, got an awkward position, over raced. Um, pedigree, a bit of a question mark. But you look at the mum, she won over 2,200 in the second dam, uh, won nine races between 1,800 and 2,400. So mm. there's enough in the pedigree on the dam side. It's just this horse can stretch out to 1,600. Um, but yeah, personally, I'll be taking a set against Mananui. Yeah, okay. BP, um, give us the four on uh, this year's 2000 guineas. All right, um, I'll go with Navier on top as my top selection in the race. I think with everything he's done in his last two starts and more so with what he did last time out, uh, I've got him on top. 
Second, third, and fourth, I, I have changed these numbers so many times. I want to add this horse and got to take this one now. I've got to add this one in. Okay, heck, now, what if that goes forward? I need to put this one in. So uh, I, I keep changing my mind here around second, third, or fourth. I'm going to go with Meritable as my second selection in the race. Just on him covering that uh, wide barrier draw, getting to a forward position, and, and maybe just being able to run a, a really big race uh, from up front if he, if he doesn't get looked at. I just liked his two recent runs. His fourth in the Hawks Bay Guineas, but also more obvious, his run behind Paranui Bay uh, in the Sartan. And I like the Sartan form with uh, Dark Destroyer, who finished into third position. And then I'll go with Field of Gold, who finished into second position behind uh, Novia in the Water Creed, leaving out Wakari. I wish I win's going to get the right run, but uh, that's the way I've, I've fallen in the end with this year's 2000 Guineas. Yeah, tricky. Uh, Paul, 6,000 Navier. Sure, that's been enough to twist your arm here. What are your what are your numbers? Yeah, Novere on top. I've, I've gone with the CD Raider, Wakari, uh, in for second. Uh, I'm sticking with I Wish I Win. And yeah. then I like the uh, Baker Forsman cult, Meritable, in for fourth. Okay. Everyone's got Navere on top, Steve. No no surprise, I guess, off that last start win, really. Yeah, I'm very keen on the Water Creek Stakes as an overall profile leading into the 2000 Guineas. I think they'll Quinella again, Navere and Field of Gold. Uh, I'm not sure you can turn the tables field of gold, but I just respect that SP and the stable. Mm. Uh, they'll work this horse out on what went wrong last start. And Navier personally are rated a 34% chance. So 250 is a little bit skinny, um, but the money suggesting uh, the 290 we offered early doors was was value. Should touch high. Yeah, okay. All right, gentlemen, let's move it on. Race number 10 on the card. Look at the lead up, traditional lead up to a New Zealand Cup. Uh, obviously, that's run over 3,200 metres. The Metropolitan, though, Steve, has run over 2,500 metres. And I, I like this race. I like this race. It's got a bit of form in it. The, a few different angles. Some nice a few stars, northerners. a few northerners, yep. a nice 2,500. Good lead up to next Saturday. Uh, run us through this, Mark. You hit it by the Southerner and Southern Ocean, $4.50 uh, at the top of the market. Uh, one of two runners that have been well supported in the first 24 hours, number six and bodes well, 550 firmed into five. And the second one being Lincoln King, just sense of timing around this galloper for Stephen Marsh and Daniel Johnson, six off a peak, or off a peak of $6 now trading five. So you've got bodes well, Lincoln King, they're the two that punters have identified. A swords drawn, interesting runner. We'll touch on him in terms of uh, the form in the chit chat, 480 mm -hmm. up to six. D&G, flat $10, hasn't budged since the opening call. Uh, Mr. Intelligence, 12 out to 15. Riviera Rock, 17. Best of the rest, Miss Tavi at a $21 price. Nice betting race the Metropolitan BP. As the two, Steve, the two Steve mentioned, though, bodes well in Lincoln King, losing results in final field. And don't worry, they've found them in the futures too. So that's interesting to know. Yeah, look, this is a good race, isn't it? I, I really like it, as you said, Thad. Um, Lincoln King's been one of those horses that, just seems to be building once again, like we saw last year when leading towards the New Zealand Cup when finishing uh, into second position, Lincoln King. You ran fourth in this race last year. I wouldn't be surprised if he can get the job done here uh, on, on Saturday. Uh, Lincoln King for Stephen Marsh. Gee, Stephen Marsh stable in the last couple of weeks. Well, they've oh. really turned it up a notch, haven't they? Oof, why are we? Uh, so, and that means they're hitting their straps at the right time uh, with uh, all the big races coming up. So, I was keen on him. I thought bodes well, though. At the same time, he just looks to be that uh, just a, a nice stayer coming back. That looks to be in a in a good position. Uh, I, I like how he's run last time out behind Sweet Clementine. And look, look he's a horse that would appreciate that some a uh, little bit of assistance, obviously as well. Uh, just getting that toe on the ground. Uh, but there's a number of different angles here. You can go look towards DNG, who's come back super this preparation, a former Cup winner, Southern Ocean in great form, sword drawn. Uh, also, but yeah, I'm starting to lean towards the Marsh runner here in Lincoln King. Mm, Paul, I heard Stephen Marsh on radio last Saturday morning suggesting this horse is flying on Louis, our good friend Louis and Mick Guerin's uh, show on Saturday morning. The mail run, good oil, mail run, the good oil. Sorry, oh, the mail, uh, no, yeah. is it the, no, it is the mail run, isn't it? Yeah, well, you've put me crook, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> but he said, the bad oil, why. Under the radar, maybe it was about eleven dollars there in futures. Don't know where it closed in futures, but I know you're a big fan of the uh, Stevens. Indeed, uh, and I, I don't mind the look of Lincoln King as well. Um, certainly in the mix, and I do like the fact that there's money come for it, and money come for bodes well. Son of yes. Zed. I mean, when was the last time we saw a son or daughter of Zed win anything? <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, but I, I'm looking further down the page. I, I really like the oh, look good. of D&G. 
Um, just a, a gutsy, gutsy mare who never gives up. And I, I think this distance is just set for it, the 2,500. Um, she absolutely loves it. I, th I think they'll, they'll probably settle back slightly from the wide draw and they'll just come into it nicely, as you said, down that long uh, rickety and straight. So, yeah, I, I really like the look of D&G here. She's a great, she'd be a great mare to own, Paul, wouldn't she? Oh, 53 starts, half a million in the kicker, and she never never runs a bad one. She tries her guts out, didn't she? Exactly. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, no, TNG. Uh, you'd love to see her uh, feature in one of these races over the next uh, week. Steve, what are your thoughts on the market? We've got Southern Ocean favourite, but it was a good push for the second and third favourites, and there has been in the futures as well. Bodes well, was good at Rotorua, wasn't he? Yeah, I think it's one of these races where you do follow the coin. Mm -hmm. um, not that you get re-handicapped in this event if you manage to win the race onto the New Zealand Cup, which was, what, seven days later. So uh, there's no reason a lot of these horses will be trying. It's just a matter of where they are. Fitness levels, um, you look at Saw's drawn, hasn't raced for a good five four, or four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, has had a try on the interim, but with the lack of money around a betting stable, you'd have to be a little bit concerned that it's maybe only 85 90% right. 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 And grand final is seven days. Mm. Uh, and you're seeing that already in early door betting, uh, 480 up to $6 around swords drawn. Uh, we know he's good enough. He's run fourth in the Wellington Cup. Um, it was a slashing run. He looks like he's come up very well with a couple of seconds. Uh, first up and second up this prep. But money indicating that he just may need the run heading yeah, into the right. New Zealand Cup. Uh, just going back on that race at Southern Ocean 1, uh, look, up to the 1,400-metre mark, uh, they ran 12.9 lengths above par. So it really did suit those horses midfield or worse. Uh, the last 608 lengths below par. Um, so you look at the horses, the likes of Southern Ocean, who was just off the speed, uh, D&G, uh, Lincoln King. The race the race shape really did suit them to, to be in the finish. Um, probably the one horse that was against it is Mr. Intelligent. Uh, he was on speed, or Intelligence, he was yeah. on speed. Um, considering the way that the race was run, um, they went uh, above... Um, above par for the yeah. first uh, thousand or so meters so he stuck on all right he yeah. stuck on okay yeah. just the just the negative is he is up two kegs over a, a staying trip 2500 and there has been a lack of money around him but yeah it's one of these races you really uh do stick with where the coin's heading yeah you want to watch it closely don't you what'd you settle on here pops we're, we've got the two we're losing on the futures bodes well and lincoln king are they both in your numbers they are yep lincoln king on top for me uh so that, that was the one i was leaning towards I like DNG. I, I, I was on her when she won the cup two years ago off the back of how she ran in the Metropolitan. Uh, now, her form last year was, was not at her absolute best, but I just how she's come back, it just gives you a bit of life to say that she can run the race of her life again on Saturday and then into the weekend. So I'll go Lincoln King uh, in front of DNG uh, and then bodes well and Sword Drawn. Uh, is Sword Drawn Southern Ocean is sort of you know, bounce between those horses. But my main three, Lincoln King, D&G, and Bodes well. Mm, but Paul, dare I say, you're uh, somewhere hovering around those numbers. Crikey, B. Pete, let's take the fixed Quinella now. Um, I've got D&G yeah. well, on top, Lincoln King, uh, Bodes well, and Southern Ocean. Okay. Oh, gee, you boys are uh, singing off the same hymn sheet uh, in this year's Metropolitan. Okay, we'll wrap record and up time to move north. Te Rapa have a good meeting. Uh, eight races on the card, I believe. And I want to, be able to start having a look in race four, Steve. Sky City, Hamilton, Waikato Cup Prelude. Prelude? Prelude. There we go, I got it out. Uh, $3 favourite here. Headed by number four, Lily Dior. Open three fifty, firmed into $3. Holds six times more money than the second elect in two, Madison and Judy Song. Rip him up, third up for Marsh. $7 flat. La Sabalier, $8. Second best bat runner happens to be number one, La Sabalier. Mm. Summer Festival, $10. Feo at $26. Uh, best of the rest is Curious George at $31. So uh, Lily Dior, clear lead, yeah. 350 into three. And as I mentioned, La Sabalier, not friendless at eight. A good push um, for the favourite Lily Dior BP, 350 into three. Look, super consistent of late. Mm -hmm. um, he had a few, had to go over ground now, so you'd think it'd be improved again, $3. Yeah, it was a good run, wasn't it? Uh, first time over ground uh, when beaten in behind uh, Justin Mays, Lily Dior, and, and just the way that she's been progressing. She's been hinting that she is uh, going to be winning more races and over more distance. Uh, so this looks ideal for her, doesn't it, at the 2,100 metres uh, for Lily Dior. Claims a kilo with Taiki aboard to get down to 56 and a half kilograms. 
uh, I, I did like the way that sort of Judy's song is coming along. I think she's a horse that uh, local trainer David Green uh, has her in a, in a really good space at the moment. The one horse I'm not too sure how to line up is Two Madison. She's just had such a long preparation. And we are now starting to get into that track condition where it's a, a query. Uh, it's been a really warm day here, for instance, Thursday afternoon uh, in the Waikato, and it, if that continues and that track keeps on improving, that's where I, that's where my question mark would be with with, with Two Madison. Um, I thought she ran a big race last time. Don't get me wrong. Uh, in group company, I just just mm -hmm. that, that's my question mark with her. Uh, but yeah, Lily Dior keep coming back to her and, and looking like the hardest to beat. Yeah, those two sort of stand out for me, Paul, uh, Lily Dior and Judy Song. Um, two Madison, as Pop says, the track conditions are maybe a little bit thinking 60 kilograms for Le Sablier. Which way did you uh, slice the fourth of the program? Uh, I do like the fact that Lily Dior has found uh, a wee bit of attention cash-wise, 350 into $3. Uh, Taikiana Gita on board uh, from the six just looks set to go. Uh, but I've always had a soft spot for that uh, Les Sablier. Um, I seem to remember, I thought we took a significant bet on her in some futures market a few years ago. I don't know if it was in an Oaks or a or a Derby or some sort of Guineas race. I, I, I can't remember, but I do remember there was a significant bet at some decent odds. So obviously someone had an opinion about her um, a few years ago. And I just like the way that um, she goes around. So... I don't mind uh, the weight on her back. Uh, I, I did appreciate that, uh, was it third or fourth last time she was out? And I think the $8 is a, an attractive enough price uh, to have a little uh, stab at it, definitely each way. Um, you can't really fault Judy Song's form. Um, she's she's doing Let's everything that's been asked of her the Let's last couple. Up, Judy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly looking at Lily Dore, but I do have a soft spot for Les Sablier. Yeah, okay, Steve. How do you see this market shaking it? Because from what I can see so far, um, Pops and Two Madison might be right there around the dryish track. I've got Stephen Marsh with two in the race here, um, Summer Festival and Rip Em Up, and I'm not seeing a lot of money for either. What I'm suggesting here is there might be a bit of movement in this market one way or another. Yeah, possibly. I'm very keen on Lily Dior. Uh, no knock last start running second, even though she started a dominant fave, getting beaten by an open class stayer and Justin Mays, who we all know <clears throat> won a Waikato Cup a couple of seasons back. And their stable's flying at the moment at the minute, David mm. Green. Um, mm. <clears throat> five of his last, well, I think five winners from his last 25 starters for David Green. So a stable that are, is worthy of following in the next two or three weeks. Um, but back to Lily Dior, just went back from the outside gate, uh, mm. first time over ground. Uh, Matty Cameron had no choice, but at the 800 metre mark, he had to take off because uh, there was a few horses there that were getting away from them. And so Matty Cameron took off from the 800, made a long sustaining run and just felt the pinch in the last furlong, Lily Dior. And yep. as I mentioned, uh, Justin Mays got a few shortcuts, came along the inside and got the better of the fave on that occasion. So look, that was its first time over ground. I think it will be beneficial because of that. And I think it's ready to hit a PB, Lily Dior. So I've clearly yeah. got it on top. Okay. Uh, $3 is probably almost its bottom price to how I assessed, it, assessed her uh, probability. Yeah. But um, Judy Song, yeah, strung two wins to give us 65 74. So it's mm -hmm. making the step up to open handicap. But just on my figures, only has to improve one length against this field at open yep. class. So uh, no knock on Judy Song, just has little tactical speed. So from that draw, probably gets back in the last third and will, be, will need uh, the tempo to go its, uh, its, its own way. But mm -hmm. um, the, the intriguing runner was Rip Him Up. Yeah, you talk about that stable, fifteen hundred meter race second up. Uh, just the race shape did not suit it. The first nine hundred tight line went out nine point seven lengths above par. Uh, and Rip 'em yeah, up was, was always I was on it. Finished last. In the, uh, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, no, Rip 'em up was always <laughs> off the bit for the last six hundred. Um, but I like what she produced in the last two hundred. It was the fastest in the race. Uh, through the line, she caught the eye. Just a sense of timing. She won third up last preparation. That's where she finds herself. This preparation. A barrier one, I don't think it's a total negative. Mm. Uh, she's a get-back horse, um, so she's going to be mapped in the last two or three regardless. But she's the intriguing runner. She's probably well found at $7, but yep. I wouldn't be surprised if she ran above her, her SP. But okay. I've clearly got Lily Dior on yeah, top. You were talking about Lily Dior being sort of towards the bottom now, that mark $3. Does your assessment change 
response to betting starts, I guess. And, uh, you know, when you're seeing no money for Rip'em Up, when you're not seeing anything for Summer Festival, when you start to think the track might be a dead four and two Madison might be disadvantaged, does that change your probabilities at all? I think or... it's race by race, case by case. Yeah. If you've got a second elect who's first up and you've got little data to work from in terms of a preparation, yes, you mm. can adjust your market in terms of probability of horses around that. But yeah. here you've got an open handicap. A lot of these horses have had at least three, four starts, you know what you're getting. Mm. Uh, when we framed this market, we knew we were going to play on probably a better side of dead track. Yeah. So yeah. there's no there's no curveballs there. So um just early yeah. money indicating Lily Dior. I, I can't start I can't see it starting any shorter than maybe 260, 270 where it's found its mark last start. But okay. 350 into three punters again yeah. thought that was a little bit of value. But 290 was my bottom price. Yeah, okay. Good early push BP for the favorite here, Lily Dior. Uh, what was your top four? Yeah, she's hard to go past, isn't it? I, I, I sort of see the races. Maybe it's lacking a bit of tempo uh, would be one thing mm. I'd be uh, a little bit concerned about. And you'd have to hope that maybe horses like Bear Grylls and maybe Fio or, or, or Mighty Connor, even with blinkers on, uh, Mighty Connor has, uh, and, you know, I mean, I sort of have to go deep into the form to find he has led all the way previously here at this venue. So uh, that, that would be just be my, just my touch of a concern about uh, how the race shape might be. But, I think overall she she looks the one to beat. I do like Judy Song, just how she's been progressing, and Le Sablier uh, with Erin Layton. She's riding in a really good space at the moment as Erin, three kilos off. Uh, and then, yeah, after that, not too sure really, sort of rip them up, might, might be able to get a cushy run, sort of fall back the pegs or something like that. But, um, yeah, Lily Deal, Judy Song, Le Sablier, my three. Yeah, I reckon they look almost standouts for me, Paul. But did you manage to put Le Sablier on top in the Waikato Cup prelude? No, I'll keep Lily Dore on top, but Le Sablier in, in behind uh, with Judy Song. And I thought uh, number six, boom, boom, boom. Let me hear you say, well. <laughs> 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 okay. well, I, don't, you, I don't know if you actually like it or you just wanted to put that in. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you have that on your ticket. I One for value. That up, Paul. <laughs> oh, very good. Just uh, on Lily Dior yeah. around the map. Yep. Um, yeah, because Pops went... talked about the speed here. So yeah, and he's yeah. right. He's bang yep. 100%. There, there is that possibility of lack of speed initially. Um, but I think it went back purely on the barrier last start. Maddie Cameron opted to go back first time over ground. I think now yeah, having right, that... Yeah. That fitness now, once it's had a, a run over ground, and you go back two starts back and even three starts back, it does have enough tactical speed to use a better gait and sit in the first half of the field if that pace yeah, okay. is slackened in the first, what, four, 600 metres. Yeah, they just wanted to see whether she's going to hit out over 2,100. Yeah, they thought sure. she would find her feet. But okay, that's a, that's a good point. Okay, guys, last race we're going to want, want to have a look at today. Race number five, Legacy Lodge Sprint. Open handicap over 1,200 metres, Steve, and a good handicap brings a good betting field. Fantastic betting field. Uh, a lot of ways to play this uh, for the punters. Run to perfection heads the market at 4.8. In front of Mask Pony has to carry the 60 kegs at 5. Packing Rockstar, Jordan Awkward Gate at 6.50 third line. Familiar first up at 9. She has the same price as Shoshone and also Super Pursuit. Only Jakarta, a speed influence at 10. Rock and Horse first up at 11. Tina again, no jock yet. Uh, is also double accepted for a race in the undercard. So intriguing oh, okay. to see where that runner goes at 12. The show of Roses at 13, Vanessa at 14, interesting runner, Romantic Lady at 15 with Loose Cannon, and Raposa Repeater, uh, the $21 ranky outside of a short view. So very compressed market. Yeah. The outsider at $21, a bunch of horses and single figures. I think mm. there's at least half a dozen, but currently headed by Run to Perfection. It was very unlucky last start at Trenton at yeah, 4.8. it was. Yeah, got got up on the protest for second. I think run to perfection. Mascarpone packing Rockstar BP. They've all had a run, but outside of that, more rough, fresh up runners than you could shake a whip at here in the uh, in the fifth. Gee, what a field this is! Uh, I mean, wow, this is a race where gee, you want to look at this race a few times uh, just to see how horses have performed in behind going forward. There looks to be speed in the race. There's horses that want to go forward. You've got Oni in Jakarta. You've got a number of other horses that will want to try and overcome their wide barrier draws by trying to put themselves in the race. You've got up and running form with horses like Shoshone, who's raced well uh, throughout the winter. Uh, looking forward to seeing the return of Super Pursuit, who hasn't got a jockey, but has uh, had a jump out on Tuesday and was performing there. And one of the LSE jump outs, Vanaz is back after a long period. Man, you just there's just a number of different ways uh, to, to try and break this race down. Look, Mascarpone is a horse that 
first and foremost, loves this venue, doesn't he? He loves the joint, and he is a runner that was desperately unlucky uh, when last presented to the races at Aotearoa. So his draw, uh, look, it is niggly, but just with where, he, where, where this pace might be in the race, he, he just might be able to try and jump and slide and try and find that spot. If he can, with all that pressure, and if there's enough there, he can find a position. I still want to be with him because you, you've only got to go back a couple of starts to go to find him winning uh, the Foxbridge Plate and how he's done so far this preparation. Uh, and yes, he has to concede weight to others, but he is, you know, he's knocking on the door of being a Group 1 horse, isn't he? I think Master Pony. So, yeah, a, a lot of different angles here, fellas, but <laughs> and a number of different ways to break it down. Yeah, he, he loves the joint, though, too, Master Pony VP, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Yeah, what's it? Six starts, two wins, three placings. Yep. Yeah, uh, it's it's just his venue. So he, he maybe he's trying to line up that Group 1 there later on next year um look there's there's pos prospects of other races in front of him as well but um yeah he's, he's just a really good horse and and look he's not underrated but he is i think this is his his real big breakout season doesn't it just has that feel about it with how he came out and won that foxbridge yeah i sure. like how the stable have kept him to uh six furlongs yeah yeah uh, they could have been tempted to late nom him and put him in a tarzino 1400 on the back of winning the foxbridge but True. They're just keeping him on the fresh side and keeping them to that twelve hundred meter mark, which I think is the key. Yeah, okay, that is a, that is a good call. But I would have I would have him straight into the uh, Tarzina as well, on the back of that. Yeah, anyway, uh, Paul, plenty of fresh up runners to work through here. Um, is there anything down the page there first up that's uh, sort of tickling your taste buds? Any old favourites? Not fresh up, but I do like the look of Only in Jakarta, uh, mm. who just didn't really get going uh, last time out. Uh, when it was uh, was at the Foxbridge, yeah. uh, I'm happy to give her another go. Uh, I, I know she's out fairly wide, but if she can get across uh, fairly easily, I, I just like her turn of foot. So I don't mind the ten dollars on offer on only in Jakarta. Uh, yeah, as you say, Mascarpone just absolutely loves the joint uh, almost as much as you like the horn, T Bone. <laughs> Um, <laughs> run to perfection. Uh, well, Stephen Marsh's stable is uh, it's flying along at the moment, so you've got to have them in there somewhere as well. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I really like the look of only in Jakarta at tens. You'll know where only in Jakarta will be, Paul, won't you? I mean, they'll be they won't you know they won't die wondering, will they? No, yeah, straight to the front, you would suggest, Steve. Tricky with all these first up runners. What do you do? I mean, it's hard work. You've gone with the horses that we've, we've probably seen, I guess. Yeah, well, Mascarpone, Packing Rockstar, they come out of that race that rode through a few weeks ago. Packing Rockstar, probably the wide gate is a negative V Mascarpone with that wide gate. Mm. Uh, Packing Rockstar probably has to go forward and, and roll the dice there, whether it gets carried or has to carry the or reasonable way to. 57 and a half, three, four wide face in the breeze. I'm not sure. Um, yep. I am I am keen on run to perfection. I think he's got a, a big win in himself down in the weights, and this may be it, 53 kegs. I mean, that race at Trentham, I know it was on a slow night. It's going to be presented on a dead, dead track on Saturday. But um, look, it raided through the roof, four lengths above par, Merton's winning. And you could argue, you could you can make a case uh, slash argue that argument that run to perfection should have won that. Um, as you mentioned, checked at a vital stage at the top of the straight, yeah. uh, ran second, but uh, you know, past the line, it was in fourth position. Um, yeah, I think he, I think he's the yeah. one if he just gets the right tempo and the right run from barrier nine down in the weights, he, he could be the one if you want to go against Mascarpone and Packing mm. Rockstar that do have to carry a reasonable uh pudding. Um, but um, yeah, outside that, it's, it's a little bit of a guesswork. You got Familiar, yeah. Super Pursuit, Rock and Horse, they're all first up. Hard to really uh, tip them out on top with any confidence, yeah. even though most of them are trolled or had jump outs. Uh, Shoshone, BP, you, you got it home as your best bat runner last week. The different race shape slash profile here, uh, bigger mm -hmm. field, yes, down in the handicaps once again, 53, but around track conditions, have you got it in first four, you're going to play against it? Um, I, just don't, I just don't know if this is the right race, really. Um, I mean, it's the right race we'd have a shot at because... She's in really good in really good form at the moment, but I think all the rain that that has fallen sort of post Melbourne Cup race meeting uh, in the area and what's coming is is I think lacking of it is 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 probably the one issue for her, isn't it? If this track condition was dead six pushing into slow seven, 
I think you would have her in your numbers. Um, that, that, that would be my only concern. But you counteract that by saying that she is up and running. But then you look back at her run two starts ago, she was up against, you know, good quality horses, albeit at White Throat level, uh, and she was beat. And so I'm happy to, to, to risk her uh, in this race. She, she was very dominant in that race. I love how they just used her because she was the best horse in the race, put her in the race and, and put them away in, in that four-horse race uh, last week. Um, Shower Roses is, is, is an interesting horse too, isn't it? Now, this is a runner that really came onto the scene last season by winning the Kalai Zuzu and also the Rich Hill Mile. Uh, she is drawn low. We know that she can uh, have the barrier speed to take a position. Uh, will she... How far is she to run 1,200 metres after what we saw from her last campaign, as I said, winning those two races? So um, I, I know that she comes in as, a, as an Elvisy jump out winner, uh, sorry, place getter uh, to show her roses. She might be that little smoky if you're trying to find something else to bolster things up. But there's a, a lot of horses here that you could put in that category of trying to bolster up the trifecta or first four. It's a real puzzle, BP. Let's stay with you, mate. Uh, try and put them in order for us. Look, I'll go with last year's winner in Mascarpone. Uh, he, he's the horse that I, I want to be with overall just because he he is a, a, a horse that's got runs on the board so far, this preparation. He operates so well here at this venue. Uh, away from him, I, I'm a little bit like Paul. I, I don't want to drop only in Jakarta just yet. Um, I, I think she's she's worthy of still having uh, something on her at a bit of a price at that $10 or $11. Uh, it just comes down to how much work she has to do, but she's so fast out of the barriers. I think that she can cross them quite easily. It's just as long as she's not just spending, she's not squeezing too much juice out of that orange to find that 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 plastic. So I'll put her in, into my numbers, and then I'll look towards sort of run to perfection, and I'll throw a show of roses in there uh, as well. So uh, one, twelve, ten, and three. Yeah, Paul, where'd you settle here in the uh, fifth of the day, the Legacy Lodge? Because uh, tricky, as we've stated. Yes, yeah, yes, wide open. Uh, so I've gone with Oni and Chicada on top, uh, Mascarpone uh, with Run to Perfection, and then Romantic Lady to fill the top four. Yeah, okay. Oni and Chicada. Oni and Chicada on top for you, sorry. Would I... Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay, $10. She's a speedy horse. Uh, she can just get across. As BP says, spend not too much. Uh, she will be hard to run down. Look, I said a little bit of money for Rock and Horse mm. before we move on, Steve. Yeah, good uh, call. Yeah, uh, um, first up as well, one of these first up runners. But Rock and Horse looked pretty progressive last preparation, I thought. Yeah, and I like how they turn out a horse on top. It won its last start, uh, open class sprint. Had next prep ridden all over it. It was one of these horses that had to go through the grades, finally hit open class at the back end of his last preparation. And mm. um, yeah, she's, she's a talented mare, and I, I'm sure they're looking at uh, group ones over Christmas and New yep. Year uh, railways and yeah yeah look she she might not be that well off in, in the set weights and penalties races mm. um, but saying that if she won a couple open handicaps leading into it uh, that may not be the case but um, yeah she, you just got to trust a little bit of money around the Moroni Gerard stable yeah. uh, it's had a couple of trials so it shouldn't be too far off the mark out of all the first up runners in this race uh, that's where the money's headed yeah yeah we are seeing a good good uh, dribble for it I'd have to say you were like run perfection is the yeah, to yeah, I'm just going to yeah. take a gamble up and running third up down the weights 53. Barrier nine, I think it can sit in that just just worse than midfield. If it can get a three way, a three wide train and loom into it, um, doesn't want the track to be too much of a, an improver. Maybe yeah. dead five, yeah. dead four at its best, but being at the back end of the program, hopefully mm. it remains dead four, no, no better. Yeah. Third up into this does look hard to beat, but a tricky race and it'll be an interesting race. Uh, with some uh, repercussions later in the season for our sprinters. Uh, race number five at Tidapa. Right, though, team, I can see Ruben, our producer, starting to nod off, so we better get towards best bets. But before you do that, Pops, apologies. I'd forgotten your maiden of the week. What did you spy for us? Wow, well, I'll tell you what, it was an unforgettable performance as well uh, from this runner. And even more unforgettable is the fact that the TAB decided to put out no deductions on the race meeting on Saturday. <laughs> let's have a let's go back to stars and cream feeding can blow them off the racetrack at Tauranga uh, on Saturday just gone from an inside gate she's gone straight to the front and she had no exposed form no exposed form in terms of public appearances but she had won two jump outs out of Pookie and out of Ellerslie her Ellerslie jump out was so good it was so good and she blew them away there and she brought it to the races on Saturday, winning by nine lengths. 
and closed off at around 3.30. But of course, the early quote was at $14 uh, and there was no deductions applied. So that is my maiden of the week, Stars and Cream. And boy, I know there was only three other rivals in the race, but I'm looking forward to seeing what's happening with her next time. Does, do you reckon, does it sound like Pops got 14s or not? I, I, can <laughs> I think so. I couldn't I tell. I think so. Yeah. And 12, <laughs> and 10, and 8. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was well, making 3.30. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, she was a daughter by High Chaparral, that Jack Giorgetti, uh, the late Jack Giorgetti trained. Yeah. And uh, long story short, um, one afternoon I went out to Jack's place. Uh, family were good friends with Jack and, she had just been retired after about eight or nine starts from memory and mm. didn't, win a, didn't win a race, but she ran some slashes and made in class, but she had obviously had her issues and uh, unable to have a longevity in terms of race career. But uh, she was in the paddock and just retired. And Jack said to the old man and the uncle and I and said, this horse here had as much ability, the likes of Cruzeiro, Ligero, mm. Creel, yeah, yeah, who was families. top liners, uh, yep. Ferreira. Uh, and she was bred to, to be quite useful so mm. I, i'm glad to see your progeny doing something at the races and just seeing it our puni the or sorry oteki the last race today mm. she also had a, a, a half sibling go around by pentire making its debut and it ran on well for third so okay. wouldn't be surprised if any of the progeny out of biscuit goes to a, a reasonable level okay we'll keep our eyes peeled mm. for that um best bet time gentlemen um paul we'll come to you um start us away with your best bit of the weekend yeah i'll uh, stay uh, at Tarapa, I'll go race seven, uh, number five, Rose and Power. Uh, an impressive win uh, last time out at Hawke's Bay, uh, this daughter of Power. And I don't mind the odds on offer, $5.50. Rose and Power for mine. Yeah, okay. Well, you'll lead them up. If you stay out of trouble, you'd suggest Rose and Power. And the one at things, as you say, was very good. Um, BP, where'd you settle for a best bet, please? Mine's more on the value side here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack uh, for my best bet this weekend. I'm going to go to, 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 to Tarapa race number three in the 65 stayers race in Plashenko. I just feel as though the timing is right for this horse to be winning once again. Now, he's going to be down at 56 and a half kilograms. 12 months ago, he was able to win here at Tarapa uh, in what was the Labor Day 65 over 2,000 metres. He then went to Christchurch and ran a really good race when running sixth in the Metropolitan. Couldn't quite get his way into the New Zealand Cup, uh, and he was able to win over 2,500 metres in a rating 82 on Cup Day at Rickerton, uh, did Plashenko. I just feel as though he is nicely placed now in a 65 over ground and getting down to 56.5 kilograms, and he's won two races here at this venue. He's at a nice each-way price. I like him on the weekend, Plashenko, as my best yeah. bet in race number three. Don't mind a bit of value, seven dollars on the win for Plashenko, Stephen. I think he's found the right race. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of those horses have found their mark. They're genuine sixty-five horses, so there's no well beaters. Okay, your best bet, please. Yeah, I'll go race four. Lily Dior, we've spoken about this mm. horse uh, already early doors uh, from the show, and yeah, just sense of timing. I reckon it's about to hit a PB. Second time over a staying trip, race shape just wasn't quite to its liking the way it mapped and got back and had to be hustled from the eight hundred. Uh, Pick last 200, I think it's ready to go. PB, uh, Lily Dior. And from Barrier Six, I think you can find a, a neutral yeah. position or maybe just forward of, forward of that middle uh, middle map. But uh, Lily Dior okay. currently three. Yeah, beautiful. A second go over ground and will be hard to beat. Okay, gents, we've got to wrap it up. Paul Mawadi, thank you for joining us. Um, you'll be looking forward to Cut Week. Shame no one can go down, though, and no one's going to be down there. And you know, uh, Yeah, it is a shame. Um, they really put on a great show uh, down in Christchurch at this time of the year. Uh, yeah. But because of the world that we live in at the moment, uh, no one can get down. So, yeah, as you say, uh, all the best to those who are down there. No one? No one can get down? Oh, well, I'm sure there'll be a few people down there. Um, <laughs> just not in the same sort of numbers or the same sort of atmosphere that we've come become accustomed to uh, in Cup and Show Week down at uh, Christchurch. Fantastic. I'll leave it at that. You got yeah. off light. Have a good weekend. Thanks, BP, for your input and help, as always. And you'll be looking forward to another great cup week. I think, yeah. I mean, it is the best week, isn't it? I mean, if you, if you can actually yeah. get down there and uh, and be a part of it, um, it is it is a, a real treat to be a, a part of it. I'll give you a little sneaky um, place chance in the New Zealand Trotting Cup. Henry Hubert It's going to be around 41s and 7s. Uh, stable mate can step in classy brigade. If this horse can maybe get round to the pegs, uh, and be in front. It was quite unlucky in the Kaikoura Cup. 
forty ones and sevens if you're looking for something on the each way away from some of those shorties. Yeah, ran a nice third in the Kaikoura Cup, didn't it? Behind uh, South Coast Dunn and Classy Brigade. It did. It did. I thought it was a really good run. Yep. Nice. Okay. John Dunn, stable mate, second stringer. I don't mind at seven dollars. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Gentlemen, thank you, Paul. Thank you, BP. Thanks, Steve, for your efforts, as always. Yeah, cheers, mate. Bringing the insights. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic week. Just carries on from uh, Cup Week over yeah, at Flemington, all three codes down at Christchurch. So, uh, no, I really look forward to this carnival kicking off the 2,000 guineas. Coupons on the middle day. That mm. market will be open Saturday afternoon. Oh, good. Currently still holds futures, but final field Saturday afternoon. Okay, thank you for joining us as well out there. And we will be back to preview New Zealand Cup Day and 1,000 guineas day in seven days' time on the leg up.